You know there guys, this is Dale from Low Mamba Airsoft and today we're taking a look at the Department Airsoft CQB Centre down in Leicester. Now, one thing to get out of the way is that most of these videos are first impression reviews. This is not, however. Um, I've actually been to this site twice before when they did open days in the past. I didn't review the site then though because I felt that the open days were more of an event and less of a standard game day. So it wouldn't be indicative of what you could expect when you turn up for one of those standard game days. So I waited until a proper one came along that I wanted and had the time to go to and did the review then. So with that in mind, everything I'm going to talk about in this video is based on my experiences of the most recent game day that I went to and that day only. So with that out of the way, on with the review. So the site's located on Winston Avenue in Croft, which is near Leicester. Um, the postcode for the site can be found in the description down below, and for me it dropped me off exactly where I needed to be. The site's at the end of the road that it's on, so there's no chance of driving past it or whatever. Uh, once you actually arrive at the site, there is a public car park on the right where you can leave your car. Um, as this is a public car park, however, please make sure that all your gear is covered on the walk from that car park to the main actual site entrance. You don't want to spook a member of the public who doesn't know what's going on. Uh, once you go through that main entrance, you'll find a sign-in desk on the left. Uh, it's also the entrance for their shop as well. So you sign in there and then they'll buzz you through and let you walk on through into the safe zone. So the walk-on fee for the site tends to vary depending on the type of event being run. Uh, because I turned up on a midweek shotgun only evening, it was a £15 walk-on if you had your own shotgun, or £35 if you wanted to buy one as part of that so you could play in the games. Um, for normal game days though, it seems to be that the walk-on is £15 and then an extra 10 15 or 20 depending on the type of hire kit you want if you need that. So you've got a bit of leeway in terms of specifying what weapon you want to hire, which is quite nice to see. Uh, food was included as part of the walk-on fee, uh, they just turned up with a massive stack of pizza near the end of the day and we all got a free drink each. Um, there is a members discount as well but it doesn't work like traditional sites do it where it's just a flat this money off the walk-on fee. It actually seemed to be a 10% off everything so the walk-on fee, consumables, all that good stuff. Um, as I said food was included, uh, they do have a small snack shop on site as well so if you get a little bit peckish in between you can pick up like a Mars bar or something. Uh, the safe zone itself was quite spacious, in, even though they've got very little in terms of raw area to play with, it actually felt larger than it was, there's enough table space for everybody, and because it's on an indoor facility everything's enclosed, so the weather's not an option, it's secure, um, there are proper bathrooms on site as well which is always nice. Um, now where most sites would have like maybe a limited spread of airsoft stuff to buy during the day, so your gas, your ammo, your BBs, like whatever, uh, because this is directly linked to the actual shop that they run, they have everything. So if you wanted, you could just buy new eye protection, a new AEG, a new grenade launcher if you really felt like it because the entire spread's there. So you're never going to find yourself in need of any airsoft equipment and you're unable to buy it. Um, Sight FPS limits are a flat 300 FPS on a 0.2 gram for everything. Uh, they will be testing with their own 0.2 gram BBs as well, so if you've got a high cap mag, make sure you empty it before you go up to the chrono because they will be loading their own 0.2s in it just to check that before allowing it onto the site. So with all that in mind then, it seems like they've got plenty of facilities and everything there was really top notch and you were never wanting for anything whilst you're on the site. So the staff on site during the evening were just great, frankly. They were really chatty, really friendly with the players. They are always asking people what they thought of the last game, if they got any input for any ideas to tweak the upcoming one, just to make sure that everyone was having a good time and if they had a good idea, they could try and incorporate it into the next game. So that was really quite nice to see. Um, they were really quite brief with the safety brief, got everything out of the way. They're good at getting people to stop their conversation so they can just say, look, this is what we're doing, just so everybody knows. Um, also during the actual game day, you'd always see one or two roaming the actual floor itself with one up in a watchtower with like a commanding view over the site. So they've got good eyes everywhere. Um, I personally didn't encounter any rules related incidents on that night, so it's just safe to say that it played really well for us. Um, for the players then, really chatty, really friendly. Everyone's all just getting to know each other in the, shot, in the um, safe zone, showing off their shotgun loadout. So it was really quite a friendly atmosphere on site, which added to it. And I didn't personally encounter any hit taking issues. I may have overheard a grumbling of one or two people, but me personally, I didn't see any. Granted, we're in extremely close quarters, so it removes a lot of the ambiguity, especially when it's very clearly defined if someone's in cover or not. There's no leaves or bushes like maybe it hit the bush. No, it's a hard wall, so it either hit the wall or it didn't. So that removes a lot of the confusion, which added to the high level of play that I experienced on that day. So what was the site terrain itself like then? Well, because this is a very small indoor CQB area, this is a place for hardcore indoor CQB only. 
Um, every corner is one you need to take with caution because it's a fairly small gaming area, so the chances of there being a target around the next bend is always high. Um, the area is built up out of plywood boards, although you see the odd tyre stacks and plastic containers to hide behind ever so often as well. There's about three areas of the map which have no lighting whatsoever. Granted, it was an evening game, so the whole place was fairly dark, but with these parts, if you didn't have a torch, you would have to be a bit brave to head into them. But that in itself is a risk, because the instant you crack a torch on in the dark space, anyone hiding in there will instantly know where you are, so being the guy with a torch isn't just a straight-up advantage. Uh, what I liked is that there are lots of angles to approach on and push. Uh, considering how overallly small the area is, it rarely feels like you've been boxed in and only have one avenue of attack that you can push, um, so bottlenecks in the game zone are few and far between. That said, however, they are not non-existent. Uh, I certainly felt like the side that started near the safe zone entrance was slightly disadvantaged, as it was possible to lock them down near their spawn point if the other team pushed far enough ahead. But because of the type of games that we were playing throughout the day, this didn't happen often. So then, as for the types of games we were playing on the evening, well, the first one was a simple search and destroy. Uh, both teams were on single shot medic, the idea being to eliminate the other team as quickly as possible. Everyone had an unlimited amount of times they could be medic though, so it was entirely possible to reduce a player a team's down to one player and that player would bring it back from the brink, as what happened in one of the games. Um, it played quite well, although I do feel that it favoured camping somewhat, um, because of the way it, the nature of the game, there was no real incentive to push forward. So if you just stood by a corner with your shotgun raised, waiting for some poor sod to walk past it, there was nothing really stopping you from doing that. So I think adding some sort of incentive for people to move around the game zone a little bit would have helped. Like maybe a domination style thing where the domination point would change to the board so you could have like a marshal walk around and they'd be the point to go to. I don't know, something like that. Uh, the next game type we played was a bit of a weird one. Um, in the centre of the map was a single room. In that room with two access points was two mannequins, a red one and a blue one. Uh, the marshals would be chucking out these lanyards, loops of material about yay big, into the map every so often. And the idea was to grab one of these lanyards, run into the middle of the room and place it on the mannequin of your choice and that would score you a point. Now, what stopped this from being a total clusterfuck is the fact that once you were in the centre of the room, you could not be killed. You'd have to go back to respawn the instant you scored, but once you've got in that room, you practically scored anyway. So it stopped any fuss about there being an enemy player in there and them having to scrap who shot who. And so it became less of a fight of the room itself and more the access points to the room. So once you're in, that's it. Great, you've scored. What this meant as well is that if you were the kind of person that didn't want to do the mad suicide runs to try and get scoring in there, you could still help the team effort by stopping the enemy players getting in. So you don't have to be the one taking all the risk to still contribute to the team effort. So I felt like this game really played well. Uh, the next one we had was a kill confirmed. So both teams, once you were shot, you had a 20 second bleed out before you could head back to respawn. If you were captured by an enemy player in that time, they would drag you back to their respawn point. You'd have to mark on a chalkboard and that would score the enemy team a point. There were also VIPs who on either side who were worth three points. So you had to kind of defend your VIP whilst hunting the enemy one as well. Again, this played well, better than the, uh, the first games as well, because, as I said, there's an incentive to move forward and to explore the map a little bit. Um, it also discouraged camping, because, yeah, you might have the one person hiding in a corner, but people tend to move in groups, so, yeah, you might surprise the first one, but then he's got two mates behind him that know where you are, so this discouraged the whole camping thing and made the game play really well, in my opinion. Um, one thing to note as well is that these games all weren't stacked on top of each other. We played the first one because it was such a simple, fast game, like four times in a row with five minutes lasting-ish. But um, after about 30 minutes of total playtime, they'd actually swap out with another group of people that were setting up in the safe zone. So that way, the game zone and the safe zone was never empty. There were two p groups of people with two teams each playing that would just rotate in and out. Um, now, whilst I was a bit sceptical of this idea because I figured, well, we're waiting for these guys to finish the games, how it actually worked is it actually meant we had more game time in general because whilst we were in the safe zone getting loaded up and the other guys were getting their stuff out of the way, they'd actually brief us on the next game so we'd not have to worry about getting it and wasting the game zone once we got in there. So I really kind of liked this system. It allowed people to recharge, have a break, reload, but also know what the next game's going to be and it just made the whole evening flow really well. So I was sceptical at first, but I really warmed up to this idea by the end of it. Now, I mentioned this because, um, as mentioned, there were two groups, and the final game involved both of those groups. They got everybody involved for the last two ones, so it was Group A versus Group B instead of just the two teams from each. And it was a simple sweep and clear of the game. 
Attackers would start from the safe zone, they'd have unlimited lives. Defenders would have two lives each, apart from a commander. Once the commander was dead, who had a single life and a riot shield, the game was won. So they had to protect this one player. So, yeah, there could still be six defenders left alive, but if you take out the commander, you've already won the game. So it's just a game of sweep the site as quickly as possible and get this done. Uh, because the attackers are on limited regen as well, they can take insane risks. If they just kill a single defender in their one life, great, you've actually helped you uh, whittling away the defending force. So this one played really well. Apart from when we were defending, now I mentioned earlier about there being bottlenecks and being able to lock people in the spawn zone. This is the one time it happened. Uh, because as defenders we push so far forward, we're actually able to lock the enemy team in their spawn zone because uh, they couldn't really get out because we had an angle on everything that they were trying to do. Um, so I think in order to make this game flow a bit better, instead of starting the attackers from the safe zone end of the site, have them start from the opposite end, the dark zone. Um, because they had a bit more ways to get out of that area and push down the site. So I think that might make it play out a little bit better. But overall, plenty of interesting games on offer throughout the night. So ultimately then, is the Department Airsoft CQB Centre worth a visit? In my eyes, yes. Um, I'm not a CQB player by nature. I tend to favour me Woodland more than anything else. But I had a really good time here and I'd definitely be happy to go back. Um, the site area is small. There is no way around that, but they do use the area that they have effectively. So you're never really just locked into pushing one corridor. You've always got multiple avenues of attack you can do. The games are quick, fast paced. They're brutal, frankly. But even if one's not going your way, only five minutes, then you'll be playing another one and it'll be completely different. So it keeps it fresh and it never gets stale for me. Is this for everyone? No. Um, it is hardcore CQB. You will get shot at close range. It may hurt. That's not everyone's jam. But if you can get past that and that's the kind of thing that you want to give a go at, then this is definitely a site you need to take a look at. Now, I really hope you've enjoyed my review of the Department Airsoft CQB Centre. If you've got any questions you'd like to ask me or feedback you'd like to give, maybe you want to share your own experiences of the site. Leave them in the comments section down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And until next time, this has been Dale of Lone Wombat Airsoft.